Okay, we're going to take a little bit of a closer look on domain and range and talking about applying it into a problem. This problem says Jesse is uh, parking. She is parking is parking. Okay, I guess she's parking her car in a garage for a concert. And it says that it costs, oops, I'm making stray marks everywhere. It says that it costs $3 for each hour or each fraction an hour, meaning that if you're in there for an hour and a half, they're going to round it up to two. Your maximum charge is $24 for a day. Okay, first off, if we don't park there, how much does it cost us? Zero. If we park there for one hour, how much does it cost? It costs three dollars. It's three dollars each hour. Okay, that's uh, the question was, what's the twenty-four for? It's saying that's the maximum. So the most we would go in there for is for, and we'd have to pay is twenty-four dollars. So if we were there for two hours, we need to pay six. If we're there for three hours, nine. Four hours. 12, we can, five hours, six hours, seven hours, eight hours, 24. This is actually a direct variation. How do I know that it's a direct variation? What does that mean? Other than that means I'm smart and I know what I'm doing. What does direct variation mean? Direct variation means the same as proportional. Proportional means the line goes through what? The origin at 0, 0, which means my constant is 0. My constant is 0. If I wrote an equation for this, Well, you know what? Let me let me not even talk about the equation. I, I want to add this question in there. What if I went for nine hours? How much would it cost me? It's still 24. Even if you were there for 10 hours. You're not going past 24. That's the most that you're going to get charged for that. Okay, because that's in the application of the problem. Now, now, what if I wanted to write, let me erase this, I just wanted to talk about that. If I wanted to write these as ordered pairs, how do I represent that? What is this one? Zero, zero. So it's proportional, it goes through zero, zero. What's my next ordered pair? One, three. Two, six. 3, 9, 4, 12. All I'm doing is writing the, or, the, the numbers up here in the table as an ordered pair. It's just showing you that this, me, this can be represented like here in ordered pairs. Now, what is the X? Is the X domain or range? The X is the domain. The Y is the range. Which one is the independent variable? X is the independent variable. Y is the dependent. So, wait a minute. What do these numbers right here represent? Well, they are the independent, but in the problem, what do they represent? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. They're the what? The hours. What are the Y's? Yeah, your total cost. What if I asked you to write something depends on blank? What depends on what? Your total cost depends on your number of hours. And it's the same as saying, well, yeah, because Y depends on X. 
Now, what it wants us to do down here says grab. Let's see here. Oh, I got things just showing up all over my board here. It wants us to graph it. Well, I guess I took a picture of it somehow. Hold on. There we go. Let's... All right, here we go. First off, we just said that the X is going to be the time. Really? There we go. And the Y is going to be the total cost. Okay? Now, my time is going to start as one hour, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to stop at eight because the, the cost doesn't go any higher than that. Now, my intervals, just to make it easy, I'm going to have it go up by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. Because it's 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 9. Is this data linear? What does linear mean? It means it's a straight line because in the word linear, it says the word line. Let's add in there. What is the equation for the linear parent function? Y equals X. That is the linear parent function. Okay. Now. Moving on, oh, I don't even know why that was a circle right there. That's weird. It says, in words, what is the domain of the situation? Remember, domain was X, okay? X went from what number to what number? Zero to eight. Okay, so my domain... Um, let's see, my domain is time from 0 to 8 hours. Now, on a graph, where do you find the domain? What axis? It's on the x-axis, but is that horizontal or vertical? It is the horizontal axis. It's the one that goes across like that. Then it says, in words, what is the range of the situation? Range is your total cost from, what did it start at? Started at zero, and it went up to $24. You wouldn't go anywhere past it. And where can you find the range? That is the y-axis. That's the vertical one. The one um, axis. So when it wants domain and range in words, it's looking for what I wrote in the red. Now on number three, it says write out the dom domain and range algebraically. Okay, domain, let's talk about the domain. Domain is X. X goes between, look what I'm doing with my arrows. What's the smallest number? Zero up to eight. There it is written algebraically in inequalities. The range, it, it, it's 0 to 24, but what letter goes in there? So I, I put a Y in there. Be careful to make sure you know the difference between Y and X. Now, I want you to think about these next two problems, right? The next part right here, okay? Take a minute, and I want you to answer 5, 6, and 7. 
Okay, so if you're talking about if Jesse spends 10 hours in a parking garage, well, wait a minute. What? 10 hours is out here. It goes past, what's the most you spend in a day? 24. So it doesn't matter how many hours you spend after 8. It's still $24. The maximum she spends is 24. To write the equation, we have y equals 3x because we're multiplying 3 times each hour. That's your equation. Now, when you apply it in the real world to this problem, then it doesn't go anywhere any higher than 24. That's the most that you can have. Those are the only numbers you would be applying to this equation. Now, when you look at the next one, okay, if you're looking at it on the video, you can pause and um, see if you can figure out the table and if you can graph it. It says Peter needs to fill up his truck to drive to and from school next week. If gas costs $2.50 per gallon and his truck holds a maximum of 28 gallons, analyze the domain and range and the function of values in the following questions. First off, if he doesn't buy any gas, how much does he cost? Zero. If he buys one gallon, 250. Two gallons. Ooh, five dollars, not three. What about three gallons? 750. Four gallons? Ten dollars. Five gallons is 1250. Six gallons is 15. Seven gallons? 1750. Eight gallons? 20. Now, it only holds a maximum of 28 gallons. How many, um, how much is that going to cost? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's, let's go down here. Represent the table of values as ordered pairs. You should be able to write this as an ordered pair. 0, 0, 1, and 250. 2 and 5. Whoop, let's see, 5. 3 and 750. 4 and 10. 5 and 1250, and so on. Now, is this problem... Linear. Is it, does it make a straight line? Does it go up by the same amount all the time? Let's look. First off, let's go and talk about this right here. The X is the domain. What does the X represent? Number of gallons. The Y is the range. What does this, it represent? Your total cost. Okay, so if I go down here to my graph, let's see here. I've got X being my total cost. Oh, no, it's not. Woo. Try again. X should be the number of gallons. Y should be my total cost. I know that my gallons is going to go up by 1. What does each one of my Ys go up by? Because how much is gas? And I wish gas was just $2.50 a gallon. Closer to four dollars a gallon. All right, seven fifty. Um, ten dollars. I'll remind you. Right, somebody said ride a bike. Ride a bike to the outlet mall. See how you like it. I bet you don't go shopping. That's what online shopping is for. There you go. You save on gas money. All right, so one one gallon is two fifty. Two gallons is five dollars. 3 is 750. Okay, look. Now let's look at this. Is this linear? How do you know it's linear? It makes a straight line. Is it proportional? 
How you? How do you know that? It goes through the origin, and the constant is zero. Well, okay, so what's the equation of the line, though? The equation, y equals 250x. What's the constant? Zero. The y-intercept starts here. This is a direct variation. Okay. Now it says in words, what is the domain of the situation? Domain is the x. It means that it is number of gallons from zero to what? What's the largest amount? It says the tank can only hold how many gallons? It can only go up to 28. Again, where do you find the domain? On the x-axis. The range. The range is the y. Anytime on my test I see the word range, I write a y above it. I see domain, I write an x above it. Now the range is the total cost from zero to what? What's the, what's the most amount we can spend to put in my car? Eleven. No, well, it's 28 gallons. You have to take 28 times 250. Should be 70. Okay? It is on the y-axis. Now, if it wanted us to write this algebraically, the domain, I know that's x. My arrows point this way. My smallest number goes to the left. 0 to 28. Why do I put the equal to bar? Why do I just not put the arrows? Well, it can, yeah, it holds up to 28, but it, and, and because it can hold 28 or less, okay? It's equal to that number. The range, remember the range is Y. It starts at zero. And it goes up to the most you would you would pay is seventy dollars. The maximum Peter can spend is seventy dollars. The equation for the total cost should be y equals two fifty times x. That's my equation. I want you to remember on a graph, you know, this may be something if you struggle with domain and range when you first get your test that you want to write, have this here, and you're going to write domain. You're going to write range. You'll write independent and dependent. Maybe that's one of the first things you would write when you get that, when you get the test to help you remember throughout the test.